Hello, everybody. It's Kateri. Hey, it's Owen. And welcome to Tarot Talk by the Soothsayer's Tea. And today we're going to be discussing the magician. We all love the magician. Yeah, the magician is a great guy. <laughs> He's just a great guy. Um, So some keywords are going to be willpower, manifestation, inspiration, skills, cunning, and you know what? Just a little bit of manipulation, and we'll get into that. I think a little bit is very generous. Just a little bit. A little bit. A little little squeak. Um, So when it comes to the magician, um, in early decks, he wasn't always called magician. It was like the juggler. It was um, the performer. Uh, compared to the uh, fool, which was almost like the idiot of the major arcana, the next one was a craftsman. Um, in early tarot decks, he was either like a juggler or somebody who was creating something like a, um, like like some sort of craftsman, like a uh, what's the word I'm looking yeah, for? People work with wood. I like an adv- an advisor. An advisor, not even an advisor. It would be more or less like somebody who makes things. Um, a carpenter that's the word i'm looking for so it was always somebody that was creating something right now jesus Jesus. yes the magician is is jesus the magician is (laughs) jesus it's jesus h christ h stands for (laughs) howard so historically if we want to take a look at the word magician itself is that there's kind of two different aspects of it magician as we know as a stage magician like an entertainment magician um the people who pull rabbits out of hats um they have been considered very highly skilled and almost a little bit of a shyster because you understand that it's not actually magic but it's also such a highly skilled um it's such a highly skilled thing that they're doing a an ability so that's kind of a bit of the duality that's in the magician card itself is that there's so much skill involved but there's a little bit of trickery there but nobody's mad at it yeah exactly um in the rws death the deck the rider with smith deck mm-hmm. we see the magician portrayed as a more ceremonial magician he's got the double-sided candle held up in his right hand and his left arm is pointing down the his tools are set out in front of him one for each of the minor arcana and also representing an individual element he's surrounded by roses and lilies i believe it is mm-hmm. um and he's he's really got everything around him to manifest what he needs and that is the first and last time you will ever hear me say the word manifest what he needs because in the context that we're using it he's doing it he's putting in the work and he is, he's doing, he's just doing it, okay? I don't know why I use the word manifest. I feel like bring about is a nicer way to say it more. Yes, because I think that the reason why we're kind of like a little waffly on it is because that the word manifest has kind of been bastardized online. Yeah, I get association yeah. of wishing but not actually doing. Well, mm-hmm. the actual definition of manifestation is actually creating creating out of will you will something so therefore you go get it a lot of people do a lot of the willing part and not the getting part and i think that's why we kind of get a little squirrely around it because of the more modern take on manifestation which is like i'm gonna wish Mm -hmm. for my boyfriend and then not actually doing anything to go get a boyfriend it's not like that um this is actually straight up manifestation where actually i i need to interrupt you here the magician is actually standing there very much with his little piece of paper going where is my boyfriend he, where is my boyfriend he is manifesting <laughs> his boyfriend he's manifesting his husband he's doing the whole shebang but <laughs> to go his back guy. He, he's he's just he just wants uh joking aside it is really that card of creation it is the first character that, or first entity that the fool does come across when it comes to the fool or hero's journey. And to kind of uh, mention what you said earlier, where the figure is depicted as a ceremonial magician, um, I don't know a whole lot about ceremonial magicians. I know that we um, we are friends with them for the most part. That type of magic is very much so creating will and making your will into creation. So it's a very, very accurate um job skill that this magician would have um mm-hmm. one of the other um keywords that i find that is very important for the magician is inspiration usually when this card comes up for me and we'll talk about our experiences shortly but just a 
really kind of clear and when it comes to inspiration is that when somebody's really starting a new project and they feel really powerful about it the magician usually manifests in that regard because the word inspiration um kind of originates from the word like filled with holy breath when you're so inspired that you feel that that inspiration that is almost divine that's the magician now history wise again i think it's just very clear that this is the first person that the fool comes across now with all their skill they're not necessarily <laughs> very worldly either. They're almost they're the opposite of jack of all trades, master of none. No, they're master of one thing, and then that's it. Yeah, the magician is very much. I don't want to use the word stunted in their growth, but when the card does appear, that is sometimes what it can mean. When you are sort of refusing to look at the options you have around you and focusing in too heavily on one thing, you're stunting your growth, and that's sort of what the magician's doing in the rws deck yeah it's very it's a very pointed card it's very much so it's a one track type of card and this horse is horse goggles horse the magician goggles. is wearing horse goggles that is the word that was the metaphor i was trying to come up yes, with. yes but the <laughs> magician also gets what he wants and that's where mm -hmm. we can be a little concerned about manipulation because there are some parallels there so i'm going to touch on that in a moment but i do want to really um, introduce the concept of how the major arcana do have some comparisons and parallels with each other if we actually take the fool out of the deck and put it outside so we mentioned it in the, our last tarot talk about how the fool has no number and it can land anywhere in the major arcana and the reason for that is that if we were to slip that out and kind of put that on top and if we line up all the majors in three rows of seven we end up getting columns of parallels there so this is a little bit of a, I wouldn't say an advanced concept of tarot, but I would say more of an intermediate. And I do want to make sure that this podcast gives everybody a little more deeper understanding compared to a lot of the other basic um, podcasts, because we wanted this to be accessible, but we also want to, to give you a little more insight that's going to be in terms that you can understand. Yeah. And even if you are a beginner in this case, pay attention to this because it is, it's quite an interesting concept and it will help you sort of see the storyline that you're developing with your own tarot cards as you grow exactly because you don't have to necessarily understand this concept but understanding it exists will really help so if you were to remove the fool and line up all the majors in three rows of seven so we got the magician to the chariot that first line is consciousness so these cards in the major arcana are easier to read uh, because they basically represent the main concerns of society, which is willpower, subconscious, femininity, masculinity, or anything in between, um, love, education, social order. They are very much so concepts that we understand because we experience them, them almost daily. Um, and I'm going to go into the other lines um, deeper in future episodes once we come to cross that lines. But the second line is subconscious. The third line is super conscious. And that's why a lot of people, when they start leading, learning tarot, they actually start kind of dropping off once they start getting to the end of the major arcana. Because it gets more complicated to understand and they think tarot is not for them. It's actually by design. The last line is complicated because they're more or less built for the collective consciousness but i want to kind of we'll tear, bring it back to just the magician itself understand this is the first line of consciousness when you are first out of the womb when you are a little baby and you figure out how to draw something you're going to be drawing over and over and over and over again no matter how crappy it is because that's your skill and that's what you want to do and that's the magician yeah exactly and a sort of comparable but maybe slightly easier to understand concept would be the idea of the microcosm and the macrocosm. Um, when you look at it from this perspective, everything is either a microcosm or a macrocosm of each other. For example, humans are the, oh my God, I've forgotten which is which. So we're a microcosm of the macro. Yeah, we're a the microcosm macro of the macrocosm. Okay, yes. yeah, sorry. Can you believe I did STEM for six weeks? Um, <laughs> In this case, the magician is very much the microcosm of the universe. It is a representation of hum like humanity as well, very much so that is seen in the first line of consciousness. Um, 
And the tarot itself is also a microcosm of us. It's represented, it's, we are, rep- it is representative of us and all of the possibilities that we can go through and all of the paths that we will take. It is the storybook, but we are writing the story. Exactly. And that's really coming into the magician itself is that, again, I can't say this enough. Like how we said how the fool indicates innocence, the magician indicates skill and willpower. Now, there's, of course, downsides, um, just like how the fool can be um, naive. Um, The magician can be a little manipulative. And it's not because out of um, maliciousness. It's just strictly because they're very ignorant to the world around them and they kind of will do things to serve themselves in a way. Um, And it's not because they're intending to hurt other people. It's just that it's very much so what ends justifies the means because they don't realize that they can come off as manipulative. Yeah, it's very much, I think, more of an amoral manipulation. Um, It's not devious in nature. It's not evil i guess i don't really like the terms good and evil but it's not deliberate manipulation it's more selfishness selfish manipulation but they aren't thinking of the effects it is going to have on others yeah there are some great examples of this in popular media we are going to get to that in pop culture references there and you're gonna be like yes absolutely that makes sense right yeah Um, this will be explained later i promise exactly so the reason why i'm asking um our listeners to kind of line up um, the three low rows of the major arcana is because you do see some parallels between um, the first card of the subconscious, which is strength, and then the third card of superconscious, which is the devil, where those two cards also represent another version of willpower and manipulation. Where, and again, I'm not going to get too deep into these ones because we're going to deep dive those when we get to it. But again, when it comes to strength, where the figure is gently manipulating the line to close his mouth with that inner strength and inner peace well where the devil is actively manipulating people because they understand like the figure the devil understands that willpower is also weak you can see that parallel between that um basically that column when you do line up the major arcana like that and it's a really good exercise and it's also a really good exercise to understand the differences and the parallels um, with the magician and how things can manifest positively within the strength card, which is using your willpower to control everything around you in an emotional way. And then also the manipulation side within the devil, which is showing that, you know what, let's all do what we want. And that's not always a good thing. I think that's debatable. I think all of us should do exactly what we want all, all the time. time. All mm-hmm. the time. Yeah. So what's your experiences when the when like when the magician comes up? When do you see it come up often in readings? Well, I I see the magician come up fairly often actually. I get him quite a lot. I wonder what that says about me. <laughs> um but yeah, no, even when I'm reading for other people, he comes up quite a bit. And I usually interpret it as a very basically what we've been saying just very powerful but very stupid not yeah. stupid in the normal way but sort of ignorant yeah ignorant that's actually a much better word i i see him a lot with um love readings very much sort of uh i'll give an example from recently this person well it's not that recent so i can i can talk about this but basically what happened was there was one of my friends and they were in a relationship with someone who was very much not focused on them. They were very, very career driven Mm -hmm. and they weren't really looking for a relationship. And one of my friends was absolutely in love with him. I did the reading and what card do you think was representative of him in this reading? Which card do you think came up? It would, would have been, I don't know, maybe the namesake of this episode. Yeah, no, it, it, yeah, it, it was, it was the magician. And I see a lot, I see that a lot, actually, and a lot of sort of situations like that. And I sort of like to think of the magician as a CEO, but yes. like a child, like a nine year old child, but as a CEO, boss baby, the magician is boss baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> That's I don't take that to heart. I didn't actually watch boss baby, but I'm 
I hope that sort of gives you a good idea of how, what I think about the magician. Yeah. Tell me about your experiences. So I do definitely see it a lot come up when people are starting uh, new business ventures or if they're in post-secondary school, like when they're really taking control of their life. Um, like I said with the fool earlier, that comes up with a lot of people who are younger, who are like leaving the nest for the first time and they're kind of experiencing the world. Um, the the magician comes up a lot for me for people who really need to basically take the bull by the horns and get started on things. Um, it never really comes up necessarily negative t- for me. Um, it often comes up when people are squandering their abilities and they need to really focus and just put focus on what they can do. They're actually are a little more talented than they, than they think. Right. Um, the only time that would have really caught negativity is that, um, it's funny that you say like a CEO, cause I kind of say it in the same way, but not so much in a young way. It's just that they're very highly focused, um, to the point that it doesn't really matter what goes around around them. Like if you are not performing at your job, they're going to let you go. Not because, um, of any personal reasons. It's just that it's all very much. So it's all business when it comes to the magician. I'm thinking nine-year-old CEO with a distant father figure that they are desperate to impress. <laughs> you just hate it, don't you? No, I'm I'm a little more positive on the magician. Um, I actually find that this is a card of artists because no more than anybody else on this planet than artists are really invoking the magician here because they have an idea in their mind and they make it into reality. They put it on paper. Artists and witches. I very much see this card come up a lot with um, sort of witches or like magic practitioners. Um, yes. I know that's kind of quite um, obvious considering what the magician is and like what is depicted on the card. But I see this card come up an awful lot with people who are starting out their sort of magical journey. And then I don't see it come up again with that person until they've made a lot of progress. Yeah. And so I feel like that speaks a lot to the duality of the, music- music- the, musician, the musician, the magician as well. Um, and I see like that's sort of the fool progressing through the magician as well in that sense. Absolutely. Of being at the very start of your journey and being much further ahead and having a lot more knowledge than you did. It's I both... like the magician. Sorry. Go yeah, ahead. No, it's both skilled and unskilled at the same yeah. time, if it makes any sense. Well, yeah, there's an it's there's an infinite number of cycles within the magician and they are all happening at the exact same time. And it's very hard to put words to that because it is both one and the other. I very much like the magician when he comes up for myself. And for some reason, when it comes up for other people, it's not usually as positive. Like, that's just chance. But I find that interesting. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's um, it's almost always comes up for people um, who are in creative c- careers. It comes up, and it's usually a, a case that they have to take control of their own destiny because being in a career that's creative, they're kind of being told by other people what they have to do um, just because they're the quote-unquote really good artists and they're the ones doing it. It usually, when it comes up for me, I'm like, you've got to take more control because you have more skill than you're led to believe. Yeah, I think that's really beautiful. The card of artists and witches. How yes. beautiful is that? That's what it should be called from now on. F- the magician. <laughs> All right. So pulp, pop culture. Pulp um, fiction. Pulp fiction, <laughs> what... right? Almost, right? No, pop culture connections. So this is my where it's going to help a lot of people because I know we were talking like a little bit of smack on the um, magician a bit there. But... What's your pop culture connection? I have a few of them, okay. but what's yours? Well, this one might be a little bit older, but also my concept of time is very bad. Um, I like to think of The Magician very much as House from House MD. Just very much that sort of driven self. I, wanna, I don't want to say self-centered, but it kind of is self-centered. It is a little bit of selfishness. There's very much self-centered, but with the... The right you get you get there where you want to go you get where you want to go you may not be happy about it but you get there that's one thing i should um we really should have mentioned as well is that the magician is arrogant mm-hmm. it is a yeah. very arrogant card not without good reason they're very good at what they do but they're not infallible 
So for example, in this instance, Ven would be my pop culture reference. Kateri is my pop culture reference. <laughs> Me? <laughs> you are the magician. Yes. Me? You are the magician and I am the fool in this situation, <laughs> in this podcast. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I have, again, a good, a it was few not good a compliment. examples. You know what? Shut your hole. I'm taking it as a compliment. Um, my, I have three of them because they're all very similar. And I'll tell you the main reason why they're very similar is because these are characters that a fool type character would meet, would be the first person that they would come across. Um, I have the doctor from Doctor Who because all of his companions, those poor bastards being drug around by this um, man or woman or entity that knows so much about time travel and the concepts of things but always manages to get them in trouble because of some sort of oversight that's the magician in a nutshell someone who is so absolutely fantastic and almost brilliant in all of their skills but still somehow managed to get stuck in the dirt that's the doctor that's the magician And another one that I have is um, Han Solo. I think it's kind of um, quite obvious with that one. Again, smooth, suave, thinks he knows everything, got everything figured out, but has himself in a lot of trouble. Because with all of his manifestation, and I use the word properly with this, with all the things that he's done in his career to get properly. where he needs to go. Exactly. But where he, <laughs> everything that he's done... To get to where he is now, he's kind of burned some bridges. He's gotten himself in trouble. And that comes into the one-track mind that the magician has. Um, I am going to have to take your word on that one because I am not a fan of Star Wars. Oh my gosh, we're not talking anymore. We're done. Yeah. Again, canceling the podcast. Fine, Listen. here's a little more. <laughs> here's a little more maybe one that you do understand. Do you like Marvel at least, Owen? I like Tom Holland and I... I tolerate Marvel. Okay, so at least you understand what I'm talking about when I say Iron Man. I do. No, I do. I've watched, I think, most of the Marvel movies, if not all of them. There you go. And I definitely agree with you there. Yeah, so Iron Man is the magician to Spider-Man's fool. I'm so glad you said that because I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man is definitely the fool. We should have said that last episode. Oh, absolutely. So the thing is, is that Iron Man definitely has, um, he's got his stuff together. But does he? But does he? He does, on like on outwardly, but does he? What does he? <laughs> does he but really? Does he? Like, very yeah. flashy. And again, all that skill, all that arrogance, all that power, so much will sometimes gets him in trouble sometimes gets him in trouble <laughs> sometimes and the thing is is that the younger character looks up to the magician um they see all the pomp and circumstance they see all that fantastic kind of um flair that the magician has and that's where there's a lesson of the magician because you want to look a little deeper and see that maybe they don't have it all figured out but that's part of the charm is that although they don't have it figured out they're gonna do it yeah you want to sort of aspire to become the music <laughs> i'm never not going to say musician you kind of want to aspire to become the magician but you also want to aspire further than that you want to move past the magician you want to keep learning and keep growing and don't allow yourself to become stagnated in your perceived power Yes, absolutely. And it, it, this is a card that is of power. It's of your own personal power. It's just that as is anything in the world and with tarot in general, there is always a duality to the cards. And it's just making sure that you understand the pitfalls and make sure you're not just doing things for the sake of doing things. I'm sure that we can say in our personal peg and practices, we've done things and looking back, it's just like, why did I even try that? I was an idiot, but I did it. <laughs> no, I'm perfect actually. And so are all of my practices, every single one. I am literally the world. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got it all figured out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I think, I think I said all I want, I've wanted to say. Yeah, I've gotten across pretty much what I want to get across here, too. Fantastic. I think we're good. So tune in this Friday for our future episode where 
we're not quite sure what we're going to be discussing yet, but I think it's going to be yeah. something around media. Yeah, I think I think we're going to go for Taro in media. And sort of all the stuff that goes along with that. <laughs> I hope you can hear the contempt in my voice. <laughs> There's going to be a going to be some interesting um interesting opinions i think you might even get to see us on the very rare occasion that it happens provide hot and spicy takes (laughs) he's lying we have very strong opinions about everything at all times yes yeah this is true (laughs) but yeah thank you very much for listening thank you i am owen on Kylock, that's my second name. There we go. I almost said my full legal name, oh, middle no. name, and all, but we move. I am Owen on Kylock. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at uh, the same name. And I'm Katiri. You can find me on Instagram and on regrettably Facebook. And that's at Venoxis, V E N N E S. You can also visit my website, Venoxis.net. Um, where you can purchase readings from me, or if you live close to me, you can come see my face in person. Oh, yeah. I do readings too, by the way. I also have a website. <laughs> <laughs> we we are both professionals. <laughs> oh, I just like, me too! <laughs> I um, forgot about that. Oh, and we also have our own Instagram and Twitter now. We do. I run the little Suit Saves T Twitter. And I the run... Dot... Go ahead. Uh-huh. I think it's Soothsayers T. The dot Soothsayers T. Yes. So for Instagram, it's the dot Soothsayers T. Sorry. Dot. Oh my gosh. Listen, we're falling we apart. We are so people. professional. This is. Listen. This is the magician. We have all the will to make this work. Do we have the skill yet? That's questionable. Yeah. So, again, Instagram is the dot Soothsayers dot T. And we do also have a link tree that is linked in all the descriptions for anywhere that you're listening to this podcast on. Yeah, just just check the link tree. It knows more than we do. (laughs) It it does. I think that um, with Owen and I, we got really excited because we knew that we would be able to just, you know, kiki about tarot. And then we didn't really think Mm -hmm. too much about the semantics, which is funny because that is very much so. The fool. It's the fool and it's the magician because the fool is very much so. Let's start this. And the magician is like, oh, we're doing yeah, it. What are magician, we doing now? We actually did start it. Look at us go. We're starting it. And honestly, I think that we have more skill than we believe, except for when it comes to this whole podcasting experience. It's questionable. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, and on that note, thank you very much for listening. We will see you on Friday. Bye. <laughs> Bye.